Hello everyone, my name is Abhi Bhardwaj. I'm back with lecture series on science. Today's topic is earthquakes and I'm going to keep it very simple in layman's terms so everybody could understand. There's a lot of scientific terminology when you when you talk about earthquakes and you know they come under the branch called seismology uh, you know, or geophysics and uh, and you know sometimes difficult to understand but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible uh, for today's discussion so when we talk about earthquakes I mean all of us either have heard about them or experienced them and we know that most of them you know when they are high intensity and in intensity they cause wide-ranging damage and you know damage to property and even human life and uh, and also uh, I want to mention here that earthquakes it's very difficult to predict them so there is no instruments still which can predict the exact time and location you know of any earthquake so we can through science with geology and with uh, with the help of geophysics and with the seismology we can uh, we can find out that what are the areas which are prone to earthquakes and where the earthquakes might happen in coming months to day, uh, you know uh, years but wouldn't be able to pinpoint exactly what day what time that you know uh, that the earthquake would strike in a particular area so that's that's very important to know now to understand the earthquakes we need to go a little bit back in history of earth so when you when you look at the earth you know it was very hot in the beginning it started cooling down and it forming it formed uh, earth crust on the outer layer uh, slowly as it cooled down and uh, but when you look at inside the earth earth is still very hot it is you know it's it's molten uh, magma and, uh, and 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 so what it is is molten rocks just imagine you know just imagine all the rocks are melted uh, you know and uh, and that's called magma and uh, it comes out sometime in form of volcanoes and uh, so as you go in deep in the earth you know and it's it's very much viscous and what does that lead to is that as I give an example of eggshell for example but eggshell is one piece here uh, all the continents you see all the land mass you see is not in one piece it is it is you know it's called plates so basically and, and the science is called or the theory behind it is called plate tectonics so what is happening is all these plates are continuously moving either over each other or apart from each other and that is what is the main reason for the earthquakes because you know that the energy gets stored and it suddenly gets released uh, you know when when there is a uh, when there is a movement uh, within within these rocks and i'm going to explain it to you in detail in, 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 in shortly but but let's understand first what was earth like in the past so when you look at the land mass for example uh, you know all the continents you see today were not where they are today so they were all in you know together as in jigsaw puzzle so they were like in one piece and and that land mass were called Peningia and what happened in the history then they started moving apart from each other and they slowly moved away and in many cases they they also collided with each other and that's where uh, all the um, I mean all the so so when they collide with each other that's where the uh, all the energy gets released right and what happens is that when how do they collide so what are what are those reasons like there there are cracks and the cracks are called faults okay in in geology they are called faults and they're different type of faults so they are normal faults for example they are you know thrust faults and there are strike slip faults and and so, so the strike slip fault for example what happens is the strike falls actually the you know the, the the movement is horizontal like this and normal force it falls down like gravity you know and the thrust force is usually when they go over you know so it's like going over other one um, 
and there are different kind of boundaries when we talk about plate tectonics there are different kind of boundaries some are convergent boundaries some are divergent boundaries and the divergent boundary for example they will pull away from each other in convergent boundary they will collide with each other uh, and you know and and in this process because when you just imagine the rocks going thousands of kilometers so when the rocks collide with each other or when they go either under or over each other you're talking about thousands of kilometers now and that is where that energy gets released and that creates the an earthquake so that's very important to note other thing you need to know about earthquakes is that there are two types of waves mainly which uh, which are produced when when an earthquake happens one is called primary wave other one is called secondary wave and primary wave is the one which comes first and the secondary one is the one which comes later so to explain it in a layman's term if you imagine the thunderstorm for example you see the lightning strikes first and and you you see it first and then the thunder sound comes after so similarly the p waves comes first and then the s wave follows it but if you happen to live in an area where the earthquake happened so you know the exact point under that you know uh, um, under that um, place where, where actually the earthquake happened is called epicenter and if you happen to live in that area where the epicenter is you're gonna find both P and S waves coming together so it's it's not uh, you know it's, it's it's not gonna be like P coming first and S coming later so you, you might experience them coming very much close to each other but if you live in an area which is far away then you will see the P wave striking first and then S wave striking after so it's following the P wave after a while so that's that's important to note. Uh, how do we measure earthquakes? Uh, it's the, the 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 instrument is called seismogram, and it makes a graph. It's like you know when you see the ECG, for example, it's very much similar to that, and it makes a graph. And with that, with the help of that, the seismologist you know see how big the earthquake was. And earthquakes are happening every second. It's the one which are big intensity earthquakes, which which causes wide damage, wide ranging damage, are the one. Which are which we are more interested in, and uh, when you when you talk about the measurement of the earthquakes, the scale used is called Richter scale, and uh, it's basically going from you know zero to up to I think twelve, but every scale going up m means a lot of energy differences. Say for example, an earthquake of four Richter scale, and then earthquake of five Richter scale, the five would be 30 times more devastating than the or, or the energy the amount of energy released in, in five would be 30 times more than what it would release in four so it's, the, the difference goes very high the most damaging earthquake starts from i would say around uh, around six richer scale going up to nine ten i mean ten usually very rare but you know 9 9.5 these these are very very dangerous earthquakes and and they can cause a lot of damage so if you happen to live in an area which uh, which is earthquake prone so you also those areas are called seismically active areas an example for that is for instance california san andreas fault so if you if you if you happen to live near san andreas fault then you must make sure that your building or the house you have built have has been built of you know to withstand high intensity earthquakes very important so you know you, you, you need to you need to do that and uh, also uh, if you live in a coastal area then remember that there's a lot of big intensity earthquakes which also happens under sea and they can release huge amount of energy which can cause tsunamis uh, but tsunamis follows the earthquake so depending on how far the earthquake happened uh, from where you live but remember that if it's a high intensity earthquake you should go away as soon as possible to a higher ground because you will likely be hit by a tsunami in that area so that's extremely important and this certain things can keep you safer if you if you know you know uh, a little bit science behind how earthquake works uh, so as i mentioned that your home should be earthquake pro uh, proof if you live in an earthquake prone area then make sure that your home is earthquake proof and uh, 
and also a good example is uh, for example uh, Japan you know the building code mostly is that they can withstand a high intensity earthquake so you know you can always have um, uh, you can learn from basically you know how uh, Japan builds their buildings which with, with, which can withstand high intensity earthquakes and and try to follow you know um, some of the technology with, which they use but it's extremely important to build your homes which uh, which are earthquake you know proof and uh, so that's one thing uh, stay away from the high-rise buildings I would say if you live in an area which you know that is earthquake prone area it's, it's, it's advisable not to either live in high-rise buildings or stay away from them as much as possible and uh, and also, you know, in the end, I just want to mention that, uh, uh, as I mentioned in, in, the, in the beginning as well, that there's no way we can uh, predict earthquakes, not yet. So, so the so only thing you can do is, you know, kind of uh, make sure that from your end, that the place you live in, uh, you know, that that is uh, earthquake proof. And uh, and in future, maybe you know, the, we are still like we are still years behind but maybe it will be possible to predict exact time and location of earthquakes but currently it's not possible so only thing we can do is be aware of you know uh, of what to do and especially the tsunamis as i mentioned are preventable means if you know that there there is earthquake which happened then the deaths in the tsunami i would say are preventable because then you you can at least go away as soon as possible uh, to some higher grounds to save yourself. Uh, so that's that's I think nutshell about uh, you know about uh, earthquakes and tsunamis. Thank you for watching.